So uh, that's the first three case. So I will try to follow the same um, items than others. Um, so that's only the, the name of the of, of the work. Okay, so that's there is no interest about that. So I'm from I'm from the University of Nantes, and um, I made this presentation with some colleagues. Um, just to remind uh, you or to give you a, a global overview of the stakes. Um, so uh, as you probably know, of course, in a, in a, in Portugal, um, the role of, of the world and the societal value is very high because we have um, in, uh, in France. Uh, in the world, 80% um, of, the, of the overseas trade uh, that is by sea, and 99% uh, in the USA. Uh, there is a payroll in Europe, Europe and Defense too, and uh, 3 million of people are employed in the maritime transport sector in Europe. Um, so, for maintenance, what are the problems? So, as you can see here, and you have, you have I think, example in Portugal, and, and we have an example in, in, in other countries of Europe too. Um, they are large stakes because, um, for instance, in France we have one, more than 100 kilometers of wharves. So, what does it mean, the kilometers of wharves? Uh, if you look to this one, a concrete platform of 350 meters, that means that you have that 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 uh, that, uh, um, that means that you have 1.6 kilometers of beams. So that's very very large. Um, uh, 60, 64 kilometers are, with, are built with reinforced concrete platforms, so that's the main focus of the, of, of the talk. And we spend quite a lot of money per year for curative maintenance mainly, so that's the case here. Um, and uh, in USA, you will find that in this report, uh, there is large money that is spent in this area too. Um, so, um, Sebastian spoke about uh, wind turbines here, so they are not far from the from the wharf here because it was built due to this new activity. So that's offshore wind turbines here that are for for the moment developed for um, the um, the U.S. market, but uh, it will be uh, after for the, the French market. So that's naval energy here, and um, and so the the wharf is is built here, but it's now finished since uh, six months. Here you have the Loire River. And um, so we had a project with uh, several partners, so industrial partners mainly. Uh, you probably know uh, this one, that's Boeing. Uh, and there is, of course, port authorities and, and so on. Um, so how it was built, so uh, again, there, there is a river, so there's another bridge here. And uh, so you have pipes in steel. And we will focus on, the, on this platform that is in, in concrete, uh, because um, the main problem is here when we uh, have the, the feedback from the existing structures. So we have monitored these structures, so I don't go into detail about that. Um, uh, and we have monitored this area, okay, so uh, with two beams. So it was only to compare several sensors and to be able to uh, have a more um, a precise view about the cost, about the implementation, real implementation of the structure, and so on. Uh, what is very typical if you compare to the bridge is the access. So the, the access for uh, inspection, for maintenance, is very, very difficult when you when we speak about uh, about wharves, and um, and of course it's costly due to the to, the, to this access. So here you have typically, typically uh, a picture for illustrating that. Um, so I told already about that uh, in France. We, so we make uh, uh, some studies in view to better know uh, the the patrimony. And uh, so 60% of structures are more than uh, 50 uh, years old. So that's why that's a huge problem in, a, in, in France, the maintenance of this type of structures. You, you can find, just to, to have more uh, information about technical aspects, so there was a, um, an interim project um, five years ago uh, that was edited by uh, Portugal, by the NEC uh, in Portugal. And, um, and so we, we gather several forces here, and we developed uh, a technical guide on the web, and so there is still, uh, it is still open about concrete steel and about uh, structures management, so how to manage the structure. So that's a way to have more uh, details about, um, about technical aspects. So uh, I, don't, I will not read all of this, but um, the main topics are the decision scenario, as you have seen today, this morning, the methods, the results, and the value of a session. Okay. Um, so about the decision um, scenario. So what decision we have to do when we want to um, to maintain 
uh, a given uh, port. So we have to inspect. Uh, so that's generally service restrictive testing tools. Uh, where we can monitor, too, so that's uh, SHM. So we will speak about the limited uh, lifetime of SHM because it's not the lifetime of, uh, of the structure, typically. Um, the maintenance, uh, so by concrete removing, here you have a typical uh, so it was in a project, so that's, uh, the beam is not in the good position, it should be the, the opposite. But it was removed from the port, and after, uh, so the, there was a hydro demolition, and uh, so from this hydro demolition, we recover, or we replace the, the old concrete by a new one. Okay? So typically you have uh, three types of method, so the white short grade, the forms concrete, and the manual worker. Um, so that's uh, preventive uh, uh, maintenance because you don't uh, change the rebars. So what we call a curative repair here is when we change the steel rebar. So that's all the decision you can make. Of course, there are all there are others, but that's the main decision you can have, you can have. Um, what we have to, to to think about, and that's why uh, structural monitoring can be can can help us is that when you remove the, the concrete, you, you will have still uh, chloride inside the, this part of the concrete. So the concrete will go from the outside and from the inside. So after repair, the problem is more and more complex than it was uh, at, the, at the beginning. And it's very difficult to model. And if you have only small inspection or few inspections with time, it's impossible to model. And you are here in an illustration of how the concrete, how, how the chloride is evolving. Uh, with the maintenance, so maintenance every uh, 20 years at uh, seven, seven, seven centimeters depth uh, from the surface, you can see that it's always increasing because of the chloride that is already in the in the concrete. So the perfect the, the repair is not perfect, and you have a more complex uh, problem after repair. Uh, there is a material changes and uh, and resilient chloride content. So that could be uh, interesting to, 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 to monitor. Um, so about the methods now, uh, we have to simulate um, an, a, a hidden process. Uh, so there are some methods to, uh, uh, to simulate um, the chloride inside the concrete from um, typically the temperature, the humidity, the concentration of chloride at the surface of, uh, of, of the concrete and so on. So we can use uh, several type of processes. Uh, what is interesting here is that you have several steps. So first step is the diffusion of chloride um, near uh, the uh, river. And after you have the corrosion of the river and after you have the deterioration with large cracks. Okay, so that's what you already know probably. And um, so we are speaking about here on this presentation and this study case, we speak about the first part the diffusion and about the uh, um, preventive maintenance with this type of information. So when the chloride comes to, to reach the, the, the steel river. Okay, um, so we have to simulate the action after, so about the methods, we have to simulate the actions after, with their uncertainties. So that's very, very important because you, you see that uh, the several actions are not perfect. For instance, here you have the, the chloride um, content uh, on the on given wharf, so that's the same type of, uh, of beams, uh, but on the whole wharf, and you have that with that here. So you can see that you have a large uncertainty of the assessment of the, of the chloride, and part of this uncertainty is due to the method of assessment. So it's due to the service assistive testing, not to the um, interesting uncertainty in the, in, in the concrete. Um, and second, you have here an uncertainty of this, on the threshold. So there is a threshold bet between diffusion and corrosion. Okay, so that's this, uh, this, uh, this threshold. And um, so there is an uncertainty. And of course, if you have a rubber here at uh, 50 uh, centimeters, 50 millimeters uh, depth, uh, you will, uh, if you, uh, you have more uh, chloride than this threshold, you will have, probably, you will have a initiation of corrosion. So you have to repair if you want to have a preventive repair, you have to repair before that. Okay, so uh, that's typically a, a model of degradation, so a model of chloride ingress in, a, in the concrete, so that's done here by a gamma process. I don't speak about that, but what is interesting uh, uh, to, when, when you look to, um, 
um, to supply the point to is that you have a lot of points and something that is interesting is that the uncertainty of the measurement has not the same uh, um, probabilistic structure at the um, degradation process itself. So we can uh, remove uh, the uncertainty of the, of, the, of the monitoring and so the predictive state is, is very close after this removing from the, uh, the, the hidden state. Okay, um, and the third method that I wanted to speak about is um, improvement of, uh, um, sorry, first of all, yeah, that's here. The improvement of the prediction with accelerated tests. So as you, as you have seen, it's very difficult to forecast something when you have a, a com very complex um, process. So what is feasible is to uh, increase the cry propagation in the concrete that you use during the repair or during the build. But of course, you, uh, you, you accelerated, accelerated the, the, the process uh, with uh, something that has nothing uh, to, uh, that is not in link with the natural process of degradation. So uh, the uh, acceleration or the acceleration rate is very difficult to compute because the process is not the same. And so um, what we did is to use a Bayesian network to use this type of acceleration test and the tests that we have in the, on site because we have the monitoring on site. So we have the cry in place on site. Uh, and when you compute the factor of acceleration, you are able to use this uh, test in view to forecast the future behavior of the, of the concrete. So that could be added uh, as a method on the, on the whole uh, SHM uh, added value. So after that, about the results. Okay, about the results. Um, so the, of course we need some assumptions, so we, we, we we computed the cost for, se for the several actions. Um, so I just focus here on the cost of SHM. So you have the cost of the implementation of SHM, okay, of course. And after, you have the cost of uh, data treatment each year. Okay. So that's why you have uh, initial cost and after a cost each year if you want to treat it uh, uh, each year. So why we do that is to remove the uncertainty of measurement. So at least one, once uh, a year, we can uh, we can remove better the uncertainty of the zone. So, next one. Yes. Um, typically, a type of result that we can obtain, uh, of course, we will optimize uh, the cost, the expected cost, with semi destructive testing and, uh, and with SHM. And we will try to compare uh, these two uh, costs. So, um, so what we have to find is the time interval of inspections that reduce the uh, total expected cost. So that's a very classical approach. Um, so the total expect expected cost is the cost of inspection, repair, maintenance, and, the, so, and failure. And, um, and what we can add is... Uh, if, so that's due to my, my finger. Um, is to find the repair threshold uh, that um, reduce the time in the failure zone. So that's typically here the threshold, the primitive threshold that is changing with time and we, that we can optimize, so that's a repair threshold that we can optimize in view to reduce the cost. So that's one, one, uh, one kind of output. Another kind of output is uh, comparison of the three types of a repair in terms of uh, emission gas, in terms of cost and in terms of waste. And depending, and what is interesting is that depending of the uh, time horizon or the service lifetime of the structure that we want to, to use. So, for instance, here for civil engineering, that could be 50, 75, or 100 years. Uh, depending on that, the interest of the techniques will not be the same. Okay? Because you will not use the same number of times uh, given uh, techniques uh, depending of this. Um, of this um, of this service lifetime. And um, about the, the, the value of, uh, of SHM. So that's the first results. So the last one we obtained uh, yesterday. So it's very, very fresh results. Um, so um, uh, the objective, of course, is to compute the minimum maintenance uh, expected cost with uh, semi destructive testing. So that's what you have here. So that's the blue line here. That's the summation of the inspection, repair, corrosion session cost. 
And um, here you can see that if you inspect every uh, seven years, you obtain uh, you will obtain the best decision in terms of repair, and you will minim minimize the uh, maintenance cost over uh, the uh, lifetime of the structure. And after, um, we will use that, the same thing, but with the use of SHM. So what is interesting with SHM is you, that you will add uh, information uh, every year, of course, on, and not every, five, every seven years. But the problem is that the cost, the initial cost, of course, is, uh, is larger. Um, so we use uh, here, the, the, the best repair was a wet short concrete and five centimeters of concrete removing. And what we obtain is, um, is a gain of a, a reduce of cost of 80% with SHM. Knowing that we have limited the service lifetime of SHM itself, so without maintenance of SHM itself, uh, at 10 years. So that's uh, very important to speak about that because uh, we know that the service lifetime of SHM is not the whole lifetime of the structure. So we have to know if we how to limit that and first and second uh, if we need to more information uh, with time and in that case if we need to maintain the uh, sensor themselves. Okay, and uh, we had to to ask open questions. So uh, um, uh, I, I I have some question for you. <laughs> Um, uh, is it acceptable for text holders to support accelerated test during the three, five, first year? So is it feasible to, to do that? Uh, second, is it acceptable to pay for sensors with very limited lifetime? And now we know that sensors in concrete, their lifetime is probably between five or ten years. Okay. Um, so do you need certification? Okay. And what type of, of, of sensor you, you, you are able to, to use? Uh, should we add sensor maintenance and maintainability of sensors? Um, is there any feedback of the existing chloride sensors? So I don't know if, if you use uh, some, some this type of sensors um, in some of, of your structures. And um, is it feasible to introduce monitoring early in the design process? Because it's very intrusive when you do that very late in the design process. And so it costs a lot of money if you do that very late because you have to change a lot of things in the design. So is it possible for you, or do you do that already uh, to, to introduce monitoring early in the design process? And thank you. Is anybody here from the audience from Brisa who would like any bridge engineer or, I don't know. I I, might be. Yeah, we would be very glad. Hello, uh, I'm from a bridge design company, so uh, this, this last question is very, very interesting and we try to, to input the, the structural monitoring system when the bridge is uh, important or, or the, the scale of the bridge is quite important in the decision of the, of the operators. Um, but, uh, our experience is somehow uh, we have some some cases that where some of these structural health monitoring systems were developed uh, in some universities and what we uh, I can criticize a little bit uh, what is happening sometimes is sometimes are the students that are in the, doing their thesis or on, or so on and they are involved in this in these monitoring, monitoring systems and then they go away from universities and nobody knows about that. And there's still a long way we have to, to, to track here in Portugal and maybe in Europe to involve a little bit more the, the designers in this process and try to have some feedback and because the, the design of the bridge or is Maybe the one who knows better the behavior of the bridge, or of the bridge, or what he expected to be the behavior of the bridge, and he is very interested in, in getting back the, 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 the numbers and the, and the behavior of the materials of, and of the bridge. So um, maybe it's, I think that I can can have here is try to involve a little bit more the designers in this process, and and it's the involvement it's. It's difficult because I know you have to have a contract and it's a long-term contract, it's always a problem, but 
uh, otherwise uh, it's too 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 theoretical and no practical. <laughs> Very good, thank you very much. You created a nice <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Carlos Vizcaya. Uh, I was the, the project manager of the Pont of the Zyria, uh, which was presented the case study uh, by Antonio in the beginning of the session. Uh, at the time, I, I had the privilege of working with, uh, with the designer, Antonio Perry, the governor, present here, and also with the elder, which is the one that implemented the, the monitoring system. Uh, in my opinion, this is your presentation is a very, very interesting and a very well formulated, because I believe that things must must uh, um, uh, born at designer. It's crucial that designer defines what he intends to measure and where, in order to formulate, because this must marry with the models of behavior, is, uh, and, the, and the, at each time, the measures should be matched with the, with the theoretical models, otherwise we cannot learn, and we cannot act. In my opinion, three things must be done. The first one is to define what to measure and when. The second one is to follow always, and this following means not only by the, the one who installed the, the, the instrumentation, but especially by the, by the design. Design is the only one who can measure uh, and match it with the, with the theoretical model. And third, that should uh, lead to, to thresholds and to measures, uh, to, to, for actions, triggers for actions. And which is the, the reason I believe we are here. We should we should have should read the signs of the instrumentation. We should interpret it. We should match with this the model, and that should trigger actions. And in a way that can save money to us. And all this must must be designed in the, the very very early phases. Not of course if we don't have another another way. Doing this after is always better than have nothing, but the right the right way is to start with the very first uh, early phases of the of the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very good comment. The three points, which are very essential, and we continue. Uh, please, your name. Sure. Uh, uh, hello, my name is Vikram Akrashi, and I am trying to. Frank, I'm trying to answer your question around what is the, uh, is it feasible to introduce it in the design process? I'm trying to give you the uh, feedback from what we do in Ireland, wearing my cap as a chartered engineer and not as an academic. So I've been the like design engineer in some of these projects. And in Ireland, the method is that yes, monitoring is introduced in the design process, but on a case by case basis. And when the consequences are high, usually either when there's a large rehabilitation involved and when there was a borderline case or sometimes there's an immediate rehabilitation or repair needed. In each case, the method is to employ the design engineer led by a chartered engineer, which is a must, and then the design engineer, exactly like my like, like the previous commentator on this, um, the design engineer decides where to measure, what to measure, etc., but does not take the decision on sensors, what he said. So the maintainability sensors, they, even their calibration, they have to be ratified by a lab. So it's never given to a university. The university is too expensive and not cost effective. So we, yeah, they charge a lot of money. And, um, so what we do is, as engineers, we hire companies either from Northern Ireland or from Ireland whose job is to only guarantee that yes this chloride sample is correct or this say half cell potential thing that we're doing the process is correct but these subcontractors only guarantee those results they take no responsibility for their interpretation where they're going to measure it 
and why they're going to do it. That entire responsibility then lies on the engineer side. So this is how it's done in Ireland. Thank you very much for your comment. Yes, I think uh, proportionality is very important. For most important thing, you do more work. For less important thing, you do less work. The proportionality as a criterion for effort is a very important one. Uh, are there any other? We had already three discussions from the audience and we appreciate it very much from the local people. Are there any other questions or discussion points? We can, yes. No, maybe I don't need that. Uh, I was just wondering if there's any uh, any support by the uh, regulations in Ireland actually to take benefit of the results uh, to support, let's say, the case of continued operation or change of operation. Right. So uh, there, there hasn't been any <coughs> existing project where continued operations has been done. Except for in one case, I remember I think for Ferry Carrick Bridge, there was continued monitoring and things like that. So there is no regulation that prevents it, but there is no case right now. But but how how uh, how do you argue uh, in that case that monitoring can uh, can can provide the basis for for let's say. Um, continued operation or for operation despite uh, observed uh, damages or, or whatever. So how can you actually argue for your case of monitoring if it's not a part of the, regu uh, of the regulation? Uh, because uh, in some cases, I'll give you an, a concrete example here. So one of the cases where the county council did decide to go for a monitoring was when there was significant uncertainty about what has happened to the system. So there was this bridge, and a heavy truck was going under the bridge. And I, I was the uh, engineer of that like, project. And one of these hydraulic arms, it came up and hit the bridge upside down like this, and destroyed the entire pre-stressed beam. Now the thing is, you, if you think that complete redistribution of stress has taken place, nothing has actually happened to the bridge. You can ignore that beam. If you think that no re redistribution has of stress has taken place, then that bridge is collapsed as it stands. So the reality is somewhere in between. And our models considered all these situations, what if situations. But the county council prescribed monitoring throughout the process while we were designing the recommendations on what to do, while the repair was done, and while further strength gain was done on the bridge for, 24, uh, for, for 14 days each minute so that there were limits that were decided on if it goes beyond this, then we take this model, if it goes beyond this, this model. And there was also one case where if it goes beyond this, then we're probably like we're done for and call the insurance. But um, these are some of the situations where they consider this. That's a positive story. A negative story is there were health monitoring devices for uh, the Mala High Bridge in Ireland, where despite monitoring, there was very little movement that was observed on the bridge. And a day later, that bridge fell into the sea just after a train went over from Dublin to Belfast. And so that is one of the examples that's sometimes taken as a criticism in Ireland. Well, despite this monitoring, there has been very little movement. The train went past, the whole thing went into the sea. But I think there we have to be mindful of what is the mechanism of failure. In our case, elasticity took a big part, or let's say deformable media took part. In the case of Malahide Bridge, essentially what happened was the bridge was like this, the water washes away one of the piers, and the thing falls down. I don't expect any health monitoring system to pick up very early that kind of washing away. Well, if it's uh, monitoring the skull, uh, then it might be able to do it. Yeah, but not on the bridge. No, they, they were monitoring the skull. It depends on what you're monitoring. Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm just wondering, because uh, in, in Ireland, you're also using the Eurocode system, right? Now, yes. And in the Eurocode system, there's, uh, there's no provision uh, opening for uh, taking benefit of uh, non stop No, this was VS Code. This was VS part of the safety concept, yeah. right? So this, this, this was before Eurocode. This is... 
this is a little bit an issue in my opinion. Right? This is a big issue. Yeah. This is a very, very big issue because like I, I, I was an engineer in that company in uh, this project in 2009. That was just when the Eurocodes were coming in and we were doing our national, like, uh, uh, like essentially like adapting the Eurocodes for Ireland's uh, numbers and things like that. But for assessment, we were still using VS codes. Yeah, okay. And after that, let's say, like a full scale like monitoring hasn't been done, done in Ireland. So we are really talking about a handful. I could count the number of projects in one hand. But at least there is a legal framework through which this can be done. Yeah, yeah. And the county council can accept it. With the Eurocode, it's a big challenge that the whole assessment monitoring side, it's, it's, it's not there. So what do we do? I, I think decision. I think the actual the uh, the, uh, the the solemn uh, opportunity with the Eurocode system is the uh, let's say the opening through design by testing. Um, that that is probably the only opening we have at the present time. But we are undergoing revisions, of course, right now on the Eurocode <coughs> system, and we are uh, from the very beginning uh, pressing uh, and suggesting clauses uh, on on how to take benefit of uh, non-structural means, including specifically structural health monitoring. But we are experiencing a significant uh, reluctance to that idea in the uh, more important Eurocode committees. Uh, we are still there, we are, we are fighting, uh, the battle is not lost, but I think, I think that the own organizations, uh, they also have a role to play in, uh, in code revisions, and they should make their voices uh, heard. Uh, so this is just to flag the possibility uh, to encourage you uh, owners to make your voices heard in no, the agree with that. your code revisions. It's really, really important. Yeah. yeah, I think very, very interesting. Yes, yes, uh, everybody. Uh, but uh, it's getting uh, very interesting, so we, we continue with your remark. And either we, we can also have at the end, we have yeah. one hour left for the So, to just a follow up question to my really, and the theme seems to be because from your previous comments uh, about this reluctance and sort of situation with the codes, right? Uh, say a situation where uh, lots of structures that do exist do not satisfy current codes, the reluctance to, to allow the provisions for say SHM to be explicitly acknowledged in the code. No. What, and you say you have, you have problems with sort of people from the Eurocode committee still, well, being reluctant, but what exactly do they say? Is it, they do they give any argument they, or they say just... that design code should not include anything but structural means. Yeah, but why? Well, well, uh, is it just sort of ideology or what? Yeah. I, I, think, I think this is a very general, it's very important, I have to say. And I also agree that you have to put new things which you have, you have to discuss with designers and they, you have to make things like that that they should be applicable. And you have to educate also regular <coughs> relations, young people and so on. It's very important and we are doing it. We will keep uh, this uh, comment of you, if, if you allow me, because there are some others. But I will come back. We will, uh, Sebastian, we will come back to this comment, uh, what to do in, in standards, and we have a session tomorrow. And I would like the second presenter to come, because uh, we, we exceeded already.